Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. I have Matt Brading here. If you have not met him before, he's actually on some of my previous first podcasts. Uh, he was one of my first, I would say, coaching experiments on becoming a home inspector. And to be funny, thing is, is he's actually kind of in my backyard. You're on the north side of town, too, as well. So yeah. Houston's so big, people are like, don't train inspectors in your area. You know, you're going to take competition. And, and there's six million people here. If you even make a dent in this a action business, I, I'd be impressed. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of business. There's yeah, a lot there's of business still, to be had. I yeah, still so, send folks your way. When yeah. I can't. Oh, if you can't get them, you you send them you send them this way. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> that's Absolutely. awesome. Why not? The reason why I brought Matt Brading on today, we actually I actually got a very well written email, a very well thought email out from one of our listeners, and his name's Dustin, and. The funny thing is, is I was telling Matt about this email. I was like, man, I wish I thought through stuff like this. You know, he has really great questions about like becoming a home inspector or the transition into becoming an inspector. Me, I'd be like, I'm going to become a home inspector and I'll figure it out as I go, you know, right. but he's like sitting at home and he's like, all right, I have to maybe tackle this, tackle this, go over this hill, maybe go in the, in between these decisions I'd just be like, I'd kick down the door and I'd figure it out. You know, I'd just fall down. And I feel like you think through things a lot more than something that I would do a little bit. I think I, somewhere in the middle because I definitely think through them, but I think through them as I'm doing them, as I'm just kind of plowing through it, you know. Yeah. So, uh, um, you know, try to make some progress as I'm trying to figure it out. But, yeah, I mean, I, I worry about things too much. <laughs> so I definitely like these questions. I had a lot of the questions like that, but I just did it anyway and then figured it out as well. Yeah, so – uh, it's a really well thought out email. And so we're, he has he even highlighted the questions in red that he thought was the most important to answer. So we're going to go through these questions and answer them, both of us, you know, and I want Matt Brading's take on it because he comes from a different background than I do because I was raised in the home inspection world. Uh, I came from a multi-inspector firm. I've been surrounded by multi-inspector firms, you know, and Matt Brading, you didn't come from any home inspections, right? You, no. what was your previous job before doing home inspections? Well, so that's interesting because I worked in customer service, right? I worked for a van and truck rental company for uh, 25 years. But uh, so although I was in customer service, part of the reason why I was so interested in this type of work is because I did spend a whole lot of time uh, when they were remodeling uh, offices and they kind of put me in charge of that. And so I learned a whole lot about construction and about remodeling and things. So, and I've always kind of had an interest in stuff like that. Yeah. So it kind of set me, uh, uh, you know, it, my mind was kind of geared towards that's what I enjoyed, but going into this with a customer service background set me up for uh, being better at the aspect of marketing and, and talking to clients and realtors and stuff on the phone and, and, and kind of doing that part of it. I already had that down. Also uh, you know, if I ever decide to take on some employees, the uh, whole hiring and firing thing is something that I had uh, experience with. I struggled with the hiring and firing thing for years. I'd say three or four years. It was just, bad for me. It's but not fun. One, one thing that you said there that I thought that really took into play there about like growing your business was, you know, your, your 25 years of customer service. And yeah. I, what I always preach in my company is, or Mary and I's company is that it's customer service first, then home yeah. inspections. Right. So right. like, that's how you grow your business. So that's being said, that's why I chose Matt. And the purpose of this, uh, a podcast is to reach out and answer all of Dustin's questions that he reached out. And I do read you guys' emails. It just takes me time to get to everybody because I am running a firm. And then also this podcast is something that I kind of hang out and do on the side. Moving on into like the casual talk of the, of the show. I asked the last podcast that I did, what was their biggest mistake they made? And they've only been in seven open seven weeks and they've already made a mistake. And you know, that's what we do as business owners. We just make mistakes all the time. That's, this is what we do full time. Just make mistakes and then, and then correct as we go from there. And I wanted to know, what do you think is your biggest mistake you've made so far in the, you've been open three years now? I probably over pushing four. Um, Going to four years. Yeah. But uh, uh, biggest mistake, like, like, during an inspection, right? Um, I would have to say uh, stepping through a ceiling. And, and I, I want to emphasize that happened once and that was a really bad mistake. But the second time it happened was a worse mistake <laughs> because it was the second time. Uh, ultimately, it wasn't as bad. But the first time this happened a while back, uh, um, 
I, it was on new construction, and uh, um, and although the hole was actually pretty bad, uh, the guys you know that were building the house were like, yeah, don't worry about it, you know, and they, oh. they they fixed it. It was so awesome, right? So then it does work out, yeah. Very recently, like within like a few months, I'm walking around this attic, this really weird attic, and and there's this uh, uh, little open uh, area where I mean. It's bizarre that the decking wasn't there, but anyway, it's my fault, right? I just stepped, and I knew the second I took a step that I took the wrong step, and so like I just gingerly stepped, but I heard a crack. I, oh. I, I stepped just hard enough for the ceiling to crack, and uh, and so it made this crack. The problem is, repairing ceilings is not easy, no. you know. So uh, um, it was a big mistake because it cost me some some money to get yeah. it. Yeah. I completely agree. You know, and that's also too. So you're a licensed professional home inspector, right? And you're a yeah. professional and yeah. you put a hole through a ceiling. Yeah. And then that doesn't look very professional. It doesn't look professional. Not a good look. Not a good that, look. That's what I always, uh, that's what one of my uh, friends told me. He's like, man, how are you a professional and you step through a ceiling? You know, I'm like, hey, man. It, it happens. It's hot. You know, we're moving around a lot. Yeah. You know, it, it, it happens. I'm holding a camera. I'm holding a camera. So I'm not exactly like that was the deal. It, yeah. it, it, this happened both times. Uh, but it's like you're getting in to take a closer picture of something and you're just kind of inching in a little bit closer. So I wasn't looking where I was stepping. It's something you got to be conscious of all the time. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, probably, probably my biggest mistake. Yeah. So Both, yeah, most, my, one of the most costly ones for sure. Yeah. Because you know, you want to leave it better than the way you left it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that ends up, you have to paint like a whole ceiling. You yeah. can't, you can't just like patch it and be like, Oh, don't worry about it. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> Okay, back up. My biggest mistake was hiring the wrong contractor to do the job, and then having to hire somebody to go do it again. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets worse. Uh, so yeah, that was probably that was probably the biggest mistake. Probably more than stepping on the ceiling was hiring the wrong contractor. Yeah. So for anyone listening, like how you really what I found out myself is like I've stepped through a ceiling too when I was new, you know, brand new. And one of the things that I've really ingrained in my brain is don't look and be moving at the same time you plant your feet and then you look yeah. and then you look where you move so uh, that could be a good takeaway from there yeah totally right yeah totally for for me <laughs> as well as other folks you know uh definitely i mean on the roof especially uh uh you know the attic but and on the roof too yeah yeah good. attic That's and roof yeah you got to really I mean, those are the two most dangerous spots, you know, especially being a, other than crawl spaces, but you're right. Like the, but we don't have that too much down in Houston, right? But uh, yeah, roofs and attics don't, you know, be cognizant. And especially with the roof, I always say, you know, if I fall down, what am I going to run into? That's what I say. So like my pathing is always judged. Like there's a plumbing stack over there, you know, right. If I start sliding, I'm going to, I might have to rip out that plumbing stack, but I'm hey. not going to fall down. Right, right. To my death. Yeah. It's more important. Yeah. So my, my biggest mistake that I did, and this is actually, you know, just part of growing up in a firm, you know, you have so much marketing dollars that you put to a side. And so it was last year and this office that we market through pretty often, they, said, Hey, the mayor is coming. And would you like to sponsor the lunch of him being there and meeting all the agents? Actually, man, maybe that was two years ago. Cause it was, it was during the flood. Yeah. So it was two years ago. It happened like right during the flood and they helped that office helped like rebuild a few houses and the mayor wanted to come by and say, thank you or something. So I was like, yeah, sure, sure. But we, they wanted like a specific food order from somewhere else and i was like i don't know but the food end all be all ended up being like eighteen hundred dollars right oh my god yeah it was a lot of money <laughs> and we already agreed to it before we even knew the amount of whatever so oh my god. we ended up buying this food but we can it's definitely reasonable because we get like 400 jobs out of this office so it's like okay well yeah we can justify this i guess yeah. the mayor didn't even show up Oh my God. Yeah. So, so not only were we out like $1,800 for food, the mayor didn't even show up and I didn't even get to eat it. Uh, <laughs> you what know? a bummer. Yeah. So that being said, I'd say if you're going to market and you go into any offices, have a set dollar amount that you'll never exceed, you know, sure. and, and don't go super fancy. It doesn't make any more of an impact of just doing Chick-fil-A or, you know, some, something, you know, just Panera bread or something like that, yeah. because 
whenever you break that thousand dollar mark, or I say even the five hundred dollar mark, it yeah. just starts to become a waste, and oh, yeah. it, they're taking advantage. Right, because really and truly, I mean, it's not about the food that you bring that's going to make the impact. It's you. I mean, mm-hmm. you've got to go in there and make the impact. And whether you're bringing McDonald's or you're bringing, uh, you know, steaks from Ruth Chris, you know, like you got to. It's all on you. They're not yeah. going to. They're not going to hire you because you brought them good food. I mean, right. Yeah. It's they, they a, might remember that, but, but you need to leave an impact. Yeah. You, the yeah, impact, they need to remember you, your jokes or, you know, you know, getting their contact info and making sure that you stay in that, that drip campaign. Yeah. So uh, lesson learned, uh, don't spend $2,000 on food and then make sure you uh, don't look and move at the same time when you're yeah. in the attic space. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so, that didn't even cost me as much as your lunch. No. Okay, so it wasn't so, as much as your. <laughs> yeah, so that being said, uh, move on to the next one. Christmas is coming up, and I just bought something for myself that I'm like, man, every man should have these. But, and have you ever heard of sweatpants shorts? Like, they're sweatpants, well, but they're shorts. Well, I mean, it, they're like, like they're made out of the same fabric yes, as. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I've never owned anything like that, and I bought you, them yesterday. Do you ever go to like Academy or anything? Yeah, that's where I bought them at. Have yeah. you had you ever been there before? Was that your first trip to Academy? No, no, I've I've been there, but I've never like <laughs> seen them on the shelf and be like, man, maybe I should buy these. But I was like, man, those look comfortable. I wore them, and I was like, I feel like I'm sitting in a cloud right now. Are you going to start is... inspecting in them? <laughs> yeah, the new uniform sweatpants <laughs> shorts. <laughs> yeah, that's so ridiculous. If, if your significant other doesn't have sweatpants shorts, you should definitely look at them because it's life changing. It's definitely life changing. Well, that well, is that that is interesting that you feel that way. I <laughs> have them. I was fully aware. Uh, I'm a little bit older than you. We used to just cut the shorts, cut cut the sweatpants into shorts. Oh, okay. I think that essentially does the same thing. But uh, but they kinda. actually do sell them. I've seen yeah, kind of. I mean, they're not hemmed at the bottom or whatever. Yeah. But uh, uh, but no, I have seen them for sale. I own a pair. Um, they're okay. They're fine. But, you don't uh, you don't think they're life changing? I know. I didn't. That's not the. <laughs> that's not what came to mind. No. I, it's not the first no. thing that came to mind. These that's are okay. Fine. You know, they're cool. Well, uh, what gift would you recommend then? Oh, what gift would I recommend? Um, Man, let me see here. Something I kind of hope to get this year. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I have heard of a beer advent calendar. Okay. You so familiar what, with the? You, you uh, know what an I'm, advent? You know what an advent calendar is? I'm guessing it's a. It recommends a certain beer every day or something. Oh, even better. It gives you a beer every day for the 25 days of December up to Christmas. It's like a beer oh. a day. Oh, okay. So, so like when December starts, it's a calendar, and you have 25 beers. Or 30, how many days? I, man, how many days are Christmas? It's 20, 25. Christmas is always on the 25th. I know that. Oh, I know okay. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so 25 beers of, in there. Yeah. I, I, and just different beers. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down with that. Man, I just bought this uh, new beer. And you, you know you get the variety pack? Right. Every single one was disgusting. Really? What is it? Yeah, it's a Oscar Blues. So... If you Never see that it. on the shelf in Kroger, do not buy it. You'll be usually, really usually when I get a variety pack, like I'm, I'm like, uh, there's usually one or so in there that's like not uh, my favorite or whatever. But uh, um, but you're saying this whole thing, the whole thing. blue, don't do it. Yeah, Got it. yeah. I mean, like it, even the you know, I'm like I like IPAs. I like the hoppiness. I know a lot of people don't, but like even that okay. that beer was like watery. And mm-hmm. then they even had a beer in there that was like 3.5 percent, and I'm like, that's not even beer. That's like, <laughs> That's worse than Michelob Ultra. The session drink, yeah. Like, like how, did I get, how did I get to this point in my life right now? <laughs> I was just sitting here telling you about like an eight ounce, 12% alcohol coffee. Yeah. And I was talking about like a 12 ounce, 3%. Or, yeah, you, you'd need about 50 of those to make a dent. Yeah, I, I like that calendar idea. That's cool. Where do they sell that? Costco. It's the last place oh. I saw one. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's cool. So moving on to this email uh, that oh, we, yeah, got. we got. business. Let's do work. Yeah, so we got we got the email, and one of the first questions uh, that he opened up with it says, "Do you feel home inspectors have a good work life balance? Have you found success in creating hours that are suitable to your family needs?" And 
you know, like for me, whenever I first started, I started off a lot more aggressively than I would say other people doing it. And I thought you had more of a casual approach. And I was wondering, you know, were you, how how did work-life balance work for you whenever you had a full-time job and starting this home inspection business at the same time? You know, I, I feel like you were probably underneath a lot of stress at the time. For sure. And I mean, to answer honestly, it was hard, you know, like there was a time where uh, I was putting in like not two part-time jobs, not two full-time jobs, just somewhere in between, you know, like, like there towards the end, I was pulling enough inspections uh, um, right before I, you know, quit the other job. I was pulling in enough inspections to make a living um, yet working that full-time job. And so that, you know, that obviously is not conducive to like a home, uh, work-life balance. Like that doesn't, that's not conducive at all. Um, in the beginning, everything was really slow. Uh, I did have to sacrifice time that I wasn't used to sacrificing going to school and getting my license. Uh, Dustin's from Ohio, right? Do do you, are they licensed up there? Do you know? Ohio, they're, it's coming in slowly. Okay. So, uh, I mean, you still have to go, you had, what, to go through ASHE or something? What is it? Uh, no, they actually have like state schools up there. So they still the, have to go through schooling, right? Yeah. It's not like, but it's just not licensed, right? No, 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 no. Sort of, you, you actually don't need anything at all. You don't all. need anything. Okay. Yeah. But they recommend it, you know, and right, I think right. agents are trained to ask like what kind of certifications right, right, right. you have. So, I mean, like, you know, obviously I had hours and hours of, of schooling that I had to go through to get licensed and everything. And so I had to take time away from my other job. And my other job was very flexible. Doesn't sound like his is as flexible. Sounds like it's more like taking time away from him. My job was really flexible and, and gave me the time to do that. They didn't exactly know they were doing that, but, uh, but they did give me the time to do that. So it did take time away. Then when I got licensed, um, I mean, it was a slow go process because I was working the other job, Mm -hmm. but I really don't see how I could have done it any other way. Um, You know, I think about this. I actually work more now than I did then when I, when I worked my other job. Yeah, Uh, but you like it though. I like it better. Um, I do have more flexibility. So, I mean, like the thing is, is it's real hard when you run your own business because yeah, you can make your own schedule for your, needs for your work life work and home life balance right you can make that work but when that phone rings and somebody wants a job that's money if you can't make it when they want you then you may not get that job and mm-hmm. especially in the beginning that becomes a little bit tough but i mean ultimately i mean like i have now after getting established and it's like anything like if you're going to create this business you're going to have to bust your butt for a long time until you get it to the point where you are are comfortable and kind of start to bring it back back some of that balance, in my opinion. Like, I feel like you're going to have to, in order for it to get to the point where uh, it's going to make you a living and you get to a point where you can maybe not work the days you don't want to work so that you can have that family time or something. I mean, you got to crank it out for a while before you get to that point, because at some point you're just grasping to whatever you can get to try to develop a relationship with a realtor or whatever to, to try to better your business, to, to grow your business. So I feel like you could definitely get it there. Now, I feel like I have a better balance because, you know, it, it, we, if we want to uh, take off and go visit my family like we did this you know, past week, this, this weekend, um, you know, I took off Friday to make that happen. Um, and it was easy to do, uh, and it didn't hurt, you know, it didn't, I didn't have, I didn't feel like I was missing anything because I know when I get back, I already got a work lined up, uh, you know, and, and things like that. Um, so I, it is easier now that I've become established and I'm getting, bringing these jobs. I don't feel as bad turning down one or trying to rearrange it. I know, I know better what I have to do for that balance, even, even moving forward, like going into the holidays and stuff. Yeah. So like kind of a recap of what you said a little bit, you're saying, you know, and I think this really falls into Gary V a little bit too, as well. You know, like what he yeah. preaches is a lot. Yeah. And w- one of the things is it's like, when you first start out, don't think that your phone's going to ring just no. because you set up your website, you have your phone number, you got to like bust your butt. So you're going to give up 
if you're working a full-time job, you give up Saturday and Sunday. So then you're yeah. going to end up working 14 days, you know, months, a whole month straight totally. where you're working on your side business and working on your, your, your main time job at the same time. If you're not flexible, because his job is not flexible. It doesn't sound right. like, yeah, right. so, it doesn't sound like very flexible. Yeah. So that, that being said, like if you want to start your own thing, you have to understand that yes, work-life balance does eventually come, but you're talking what, like two years, would you say? I would say that's probably pretty average. Yeah. Two years to the point years. where you're not only getting good business, but you feel comfortable, confident enough to where you're like, you know what? I don't really need to work Sundays. You yeah. know, I don't need to, I could pull a half day on Friday and, you know, have spend time with my son, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So you know, I think that was a really good answer. Just saying, yes, it does eventually get there, but you know, you're going to sacrifice a few years of your life in hustle hard. You're not ever sitting on the couch for a, a while, you know, but it's for a good reason though. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, like, you know, you, you sacrifice in, in the scheme of things in the whole big picture, it's a small period of time that uh, yeah. you sacrifice to get to, uh, you know, where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. It's not like a crazy amount of time. My thing to that too, as well, you know, I like to tell my story a little bit about, you know, work-life balance. You know, I didn't have kids and children, you know, and Mary and I were just married, but she knew real estate life because I grew up in it. And I would literally work for my, my father a little bit, drive down to Houston, market all over to Houston, Dallas to Houston, go back. You know, I did that completely free. There was no job scheduled. Go back and hopefully I would get a job eventually. And eventually I got one job, but man, I don't even know. I don't even want to know the amount of hours I was working because I was driving, you know, that's a four hour drive there and a four hour drive back. Plus the driving of hitting all the offices in there. So that's just one day and I would have to make it back to Dallas so I can work the next day. So, yeah. you know, that's a lot of work in a normal person. I'm just starting to realize that they don't do that. Right. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, a, you know, you, you're kind of a, a kind of crazy in a way to really have the drive to want to start your own thing and understand it or maybe even have the understanding of the amount understanding the amount of work that actually comes with it you know yeah. it's it's a lot of work to start your own business so don't think that it's just something that you can kind of do just on the side and hopefully it, it comes into play you know that that's what yeah. I would say. But it is rewarding. So, I mean, like, if, if it is something you want, put in the work. Um, I, you know, that's the reason why not everyone succeeds, because they won't put in that work. Um, but, I mean, like, it is, I think it is a necessary element to be successful uh, and to build a good, solid base. And, yeah, you're just going to have to be prepared for it. I, I agree with the rewarding, too, as well, whenever you're saying, yeah, it, whenever I got that first job scheduled, I was like, you know, I, I put in – I, by that time, I probably made like 50 cents an hour by the time that job was actually scheduled. You know what I mean? Like driving there and back and maybe the gas and the time, you know, it's just maybe if, if I even profited at all. So yeah, you're, but when it starts to really come in and your business starts to build, you, uh, the, the rewarding feeling is there. So yeah, you're right. Like it, it is, it is a good feeling. Yeah, for sure. The, the next question is, is do you recommend operating your own business straight from the start or do you recommend working for another company to gain experience first? And honestly, this is one of the most hated questions I have I know uh, it is. as a home inspector. You and I've had this conversation a few times, but I, I don't think that's going to make your opinion bias at all, you know, from my no. me telling you my opinion on it. So you know, what, what's your opinion? Do you think inspectors that get out of the field, do you think that they are, you know, going and working for another company? Do you think they're doing the home inspection and with the intent of going and opening their own, do you think they're doing the inspection industry of a favor, I guess, or, you know, benefiting it? Not really. But uh, so the thing is, is I feel like not, not everyone is going to be uh, the type of person that has, you know, what it takes to uh, to go at it and make their own business. Like, like we were sitting, all that work that we had to put in that, that couple of years of doubling and tripling your efforts to, to build something that is like for everybody. Okay. Right. And a lot of people, um, they want, they might be good at it, but they want to, uh, um, 
you know, have someone else put in all that effort and just work. And that can immediately, right off the bat, create uh, some semblance of, of that balance you were looking for, you know, because you're going to know your schedule and like, you know, your guys, uh, um, you know, you, they, I, would you say that your, your guys have a pretty decent, in your opinion, work and home balance? Yeah, that, that's wow. actually what we preach in our company. Yeah. We, it, I don't know how a lot of other home inspection companies uh, work, but with in our company, we literally, we live and die by work-life balance. I, I die I mean, it took me a long time to get to the point where I can have work-life balance, mm -hmm. but whenever they get hired on, that's one of the things I'm like, hey, I want you to have this. You know, by joining my company, I understand uh, you can go out there and create your own thing, but whenever you're here, this is what I, my goal is for you. If you want to go to your son's baseball game, you don't even have to tell me why you're taking off. Go to your son's baseball game. You know, that, that's part of the advantage of being a home inspector. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Well, and then to go further in what he was talking about in his uh, question up there, they've got this no, no compete, non-compete oh, yes. situation. And so if you want and have the desire and the drive to open your company, your own company, and that's what you want to do. I want, and furthermore, uh, he goes in to talk about his experience in the construction industry. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, reading through this, he had uh, family in the industry. He has some experience in the industry. Like this is huge. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have that, if you have that knowledge base, and uh, it sounds to me like a little bit of a, a, a good uh, uh, friend. Uh, what am I looking for? Like people that you can bounce things off of, a support group. You know, uh, yeah. people that, that are knowledgeable in the field as well as well as folks like yourself um, and, and, and putting in that effort and, and, and having the reward of having your own company. If all that interests you, then 100%, I think you should do that. I don't think uh, going or working for somebody else with the intent of leaving them and opening up your own company is a good idea, especially with this non-compete situation. That just sets you behind uh, uh, whenever you go to do it. But uh, no, I think if you have the drive and you have all of these uh, things that, that he has going on, um, as long as you realize the work that it's going to take, and I, I think 100%, yeah, you should, you should do it yourself. Yeah. Yes. So my take on this uh, question that I get all the time and it, and it, it blows my mind. They, they'll just flat out tell me in the interviews too, you know, be like, Hey, I, you know, I want to join your company and then maybe one day go out on my own. And I'm like, it's almost like they don't view me as a, as a person, you know, they just view, view me as a firm, you yeah. know, like yeah. uh, it's just like, Oh, you have this business that you created and you can help support my, my goals and my, my desires. And the, the thing is, is like, whenever you operate a, a multi-inspector firm, I have a team, you know, and this team is like a family to me. You know, I, I know, you know, their kids, I know their wives, you know, and uh, you became, you be, whenever you be join our team, you become a member of our family and, you know, joining, it's like having, I guess, a stepbrother that's like, Oh, I'm only here for a little bit. You're going to get a divorce, you know, in a, and I'm going to on my way out. And then also like if I bring you on my team, it, we market even harder, right. To start filling your schedule. Yeah. And if you want to go out and leave, then w what am I out? You know, we're out 400 clients a year that I have to figure out someone else to fill the shoes. And whenever we train someone, we, tr we train them so well that you are going to operate very well by yourself and be comfortable. You get the work-life balance and you get paid really well in our company. I'd say you make almost just as much as most home inspectors out there are by themselves. You know, we just have a very well-organized system. And so you're actually hurting the people around you by doing that. You're yeah. hurting those multi-inspector firms and then you create animosity in between your local competition. You know, right. you, you're, your crit and you don't want to do that. So if you have an intent to go and start your own thing, do not join a company, you know, do not join a firm. It, you know, we're, we're a family, we're, we're a group of people that actually care about how our, our team works. 
And if you come in, it's like you're putting a virus in into the into the system, and and that just doesn't work. I hope I explained that well enough. I think so. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah. man, I think it should be addressed that things happen. You could, yeah. I mean, this person's asking this question, right? But I mean, yeah. like maybe there's somebody that goes and works for you, and has the or for another firm or whatever, and has the full intent of just working for them. And yeah. as they're doing that, they go man, you know, I've decided I really want to do this. I mean, that happens, right? right. So it is what it is. But if your intention is to uh, uh, go at it and, and open up your own one, one of these days, I mean, you're not doing anybody, even yourself, any favors by going to work and for somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if your initial intention overall always is to go and open your own thing, don't do it, you right. know, but if you like, if you like, working for a firm, you like that team support, you like the legal support, you like someone handling all your paperwork and uh, 401k, you want to join something like that, then yeah, join a firm. But if, and I, like you said, again, your desires change, you know, you've been working with a firm yeah. 10 years and you're just like, you know what, I think I can do this. Fine. You know, <laughs> yeah. but, but if your intention is to just, Hey, I'm going to feed off of this company a little bit and then, and then go and start my own thing. That's, that's a terrible way to start your career as a home inspection. We're a very small community, you know, very small. Right. Yeah. There, in, in Houston, there's 6 million people here and I bet there's only 400 home inspectors, you know, like maybe active full time. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. So I hope I answered that question or we answered that question a little bit more. It's like, this is a, a pretty big deal that I feel like it comes across like every person that really wants to join the firm. They're always like, yeah, I'm going to, join my own thing. I don't know if that's something they're teaching in the schools when they should stop because they're actually hurting the multi-inspector firms around by putting in the idea that uh, what we do is easy. It's not I certainly easy. didn't uh, get the impression uh, when I went to school about that, but I did have some people in my class that thought about doing that. I think the thing is, is there's just a lot of uncertainties going into this by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, that's different for everybody. Okay. So it, maybe it's uncertainties about running a business. Maybe it's uncertainties about doing the inspections because we both know that when you come out of home inspection school, you ain't ready. <laughs> you're not ready to do a home inspection as soon as you're licensed just because you went to school, you know? So there's a lot of uncertainties there. And I think uh, um, that that might be one of the reasons why a lot of folks are like, Hey, I just want to do this. Ultimately they kind of want to do it on their own, but I, I don't know. I kind of feel like if you can't figure out a way to make all that work on your own, then you just need to work for somebody else. And, and if you're going to work on your own, you're just going to, you just need to do it and make all that stuff work, figure just out all that stuff, De figure it out, develop a, a strong support group, because I guarantee you in Ohio, shoot, you probably know a couple of them, uh, of inspectors that, you know, Dustin here could just reach out to and be like, Hey, if in fact I'm on a job and I run into something, can I bounce this off of you? There are on, there are online forums that I knew nothing about whenever I got started, um, which can sometimes lead you down a terrible rabbit hole. But, uh, <laughs> but, we, uh, we, we could stop that conversation right there. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> we, we actually uh, go back to just developing a strong core group of people that you can call on, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, I agree. Yeah. Questions. I have several inspectors that are kind of in my area, you know, including you, you and I will bounce ideas off of with how to handle something or how to talk, call something out. So yeah, yeah, definitely find other people around you. If you want to go out on your own, that will bounce ideas off you. I mean that, for example, this is a great, our relationship by ourselves, you know, like you met me in a pool class, right? And yes. you just had some basic questions and I was just answering them. There's going to be inspectors out there that are just going to tell you exactly how to do it. And, and you're like, their first question was, is like, well, and this actually leads into his next question in the email. Let me look at it real quick. His uh, next question was, is, well, if you're not going to do the non-compete and you're not going to work with someone, uh, what is the best way to get started in the home inspection industry? Other than getting your license, the first thing I told you to do, I'm like, well, if you already have your license and you're starting to build your reports, What's the first thing that you would do? And I said, buy our comments, read yeah. them all, memorize them, and then start writing your reports with them. And you're like, well, I don't know. It's $300. You know? It seems like a lot at the time. Yeah. No, it is a lot of money at the time. <laughs> you know, that's a whole inspection, you know, yeah. and you're not even getting them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah One a month or something. So, and then 
you were like, fine. So you went and bought them and yeah. then you were like, it changed your life, you know? Yeah, to- totally. Yeah. And my reports. Yeah. You changed your reports the way you wrote them and then you're protected better, you know, legally speaking, it had the legal jargon. It teaches you how to talk like a home inspector. Yeah. And then you're like, and then your report writing, how, how much did it get shrunk down by? Well, I mean, it's hard to say, but I mean, like, I know that whenever I first started doing this, I mean, we're talking about like, you know, I'd spend a couple of few hours at a house and I mean, I'd easily double that in front of a computer. I mean, like, I don't know when I first started when I was writing my own narratives and stuff, Yeah, it was terrible, terribly long, ridiculously long and questioning and looking up things. I mean, yeah, it, ha- it cut it in half, easy cut it in half. And mm-hmm. now at this point, now that I know the system so much and know all the comments and have kind of made it my own, customizing them and adding some things, shoot, man. I mean, I get them done on site. So, you know, it makes, it's made a huge difference. Yeah. So, getting, it, getting it done on site, it's, you couldn't do that without having all that stuff in place. Yeah. So to answer that question, you know, like if you've gone out and you've gotten your license and your license is good to go, the next thing I would do, I know I'm trying to, you know, you're like, well, you're just selling your own products or whatever, but no, Honestly, like that's my first step that I do with any inspector that joins my firm. I'm like, start memorizing these. There's 2,300 of them. And they're, you know, your mind's like, oh my gosh. They're like, no, you have to, to be good at this job. And, you know, there, it's the learning curve. Some people make it, some people don't. And those, those comments will teach you how to know what to look for, what a home inspector looks for. And then you kind of grow from there. Well, if I remember in this email... Dustin had uh, his wife used to be in real estate Um, that I feel like it's like where to start. I mean, okay. Yeah, definitely. I 100% agree because your product is everything. Okay. Right. Um, So you need to uh, uh, improve your product by, you know, I do, I'm a strong advocate of getting the, uh, uh, the comments and reading through them, knowing them, you will learn probably more than you would in inspection classes. You will learn a ton of stuff from these comments. And it's really a small amount of money compared to everything you're going to pay to get your business started. So it's really not that big of a deal. And I should have done it even before I did, but, uh, um, but you know, you, you got to start marketing. You have to find an end for marketing. Now this is going to be very hard in our COVID day, uh, day and age here, right? Because right. for me and you, it was always just in person marketing showing up. And I mean, I, I can remember uh, in the early days, just like dropping off stuff at real estate offices yeah. it made little impact, if any, but um, all I wanted to do was get my name out there or whatever. Uh, I would call cold call them, see if I could go and do a, uh, you know, sponsor these breakfasts and things that they would do. Uh, that's gonna be real hard because <laughs> much of that is going on right now. You know, I remember you calling me about, you're like, Hey man, what do I say? I was like, just go up there and do it. And you're like, what? I'm just like, go up there and do it. Tell them about yourself be rememberable, just be yourself. And you're just like, it's not that easy. I'm like, yeah, it is. Just, just go do it. And you're, Man. <laughs> I feel like sometimes a terrible coach when it comes to that stuff. I'm like, you're overthinking it. Just go up there and talk. And if you mess up, you'll be better at the next one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that is so true. But I mean, like, yeah, you know, it, getting good at that, the only way you get good at it is just to keep doing it. Right. And yeah. now I feel like I, I, I love doing it. Because I know I know how to get through to people, and you know we talked about this before. It's like you know just don't try to get through to everybody. Just yeah, focus in on those couple of people that you feel like you might be able to uh, connect with. This will grow. Your business will grow on itself once you start making these connections. Yeah. Um, but you know it's going to be hard because we can't do that. We're not doing that kind of stuff now. So what do, what do you do? Um, well, first of all, I think you uh, um, have to uh, take in. Anything you can get from your wife being in real estate previously, if that's your case, she's got to still have some connections. She knows um, she knows the top she knows top producers in that office. Totally right. Take them out to coffee. The, you the know? thing is, is and and just get, try your best to get on their list. Okay, and and you know this too. Maybe you don't want top producers because they're probably not going to call you. Mm-hmm. You need the new. You need the newbies, right? Yes. Um, and, uh, and newbies will the, be top producers too. They, yeah. These are the top producers of tomorrow. And that's really where you want to get is somebody that's just like driven, but you know, these top producers, it's going to be a long time before they call you because they already have somebody that they're using, but either way, it doesn't matter who it is. You want to get on their short list of inspectors. Right. And so anything you can do, uh, to connect with those folks, whether it's reach out, send them a, a card, uh, uh you know, just, just a, 
uh, hey, uh, just let you know I'm here. Here's a business card or whatever. Make that connection and keep that connection. Get their email address, whatever. The other thing is, you know, how do you, how do you get started? Man, without being able to go into these offices, then you just have to market yourself on social media like absolute crazy, right? And Email, that's, social media, yeah. Right. So you need to find them, find the agents in your area on social media, friend them, get them to follow you, and uh, um, and th that way you can at least have a connection with them. It's going to be tough because like me and you, we do videos or pictures and stuff. In the beginning, you're not going to have much of that to market. But I mean, let's say me in the beginning, I had a buddy of mine make up a flyer with my mug on it and a couple of things, you know, Texas Edge Home Inspections. I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that, and you know, whatever, some good stuff about me. And then I just took that and just would just throw it out there. I'd put, post it every day, share it every day, send it, you know, uh, in messages to all these real estate agents yeah. that I, that I had on my list. Yeah, um, so, well, yeah, just to kind of stop you there a little bit, kind of, we're kind of talking, you know, for a little bit on the first question too, as well. And you can kind of see it, it, it takes a long time, you know, and it's yeah. a lot of work. So it's not just something that you can kind of just do part time and it just starts to take off. It takes off even more whenever you give up your first job. So this kind of leads into the next question is like, you know, how do you recommend to making the transition from your current position on the yes. railroad to a full time home inspection, right? And, That's and a, I think the question included the whether or not working just the weekends, right? Yeah, that, just the weekend. Yeah, yeah. It was talking about just, you know, just working weekends and, uh, and being able to build this business. And he was like, he, I think he said something around like three to six months, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, do you think it'll take three to six months? And if you're just working on the weekends, ah, it's going to take you a lot longer than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know? And you can, I'd say you can probably hit a lot of open houses because open houses are still happening on your weekends and, you know, getting the business starting to go. But, you know, you know doing something like this, it's almost like you are going to have to partner with your wife, I would say. If yeah. she's a real estate agent, maybe she can just change her role a little bit and then she can market whenever you're at work. And yeah, even lugging the kid around, you know, that's part of like starting this business is like you have to make sacrifices and you sacrifice a lot. I'd say if a fairly short period of time, you say two years, right? Yeah. Like you said, uh, two years, two years is really not that hard, you know, but in some takes it, that is life changing. You know, can you sacrifice lugging a kid around every day and your wife doing this for you while you're at the job full time? It's, it's a partnership when it comes to building this. I do not see it being that great just doing the weekends. You might have to go part time, you know, if you really yeah. want to do this. I, I really think that that is necessary and not to scare anybody because I mean, like I, I you know, I, look, I did it. I worked a, a full time job, but I mean, yeah. again, you said you were job, flexible. My job was very flexible, but uh, I mean, like the thing is, this is what scares me about working the weekends. I don't know how it works in Ohio, but up here or down here, we have, um, you know, these option periods. And if somebody calls you, they don't, Everyone needs an inspection yesterday. They don't yes. need it. Uh, if somebody calls you on Monday and they you tell them, I can't get you till Saturday, you're almost always going to get a no. Yeah, they um, need you on Tuesday and so here or even are, on Monday. Right. So here you are putting in all this effort into marketing and trying to get these people to call you. They call you and then you can't service them. Well, then all those efforts were for nothing at this point and they may not call you again. Yeah, that, so, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah. So yeah, maybe what, well, you know, we're just kind of brain talking about this brainstorming out loud. You know, if you really want to make this full time transition over you and you want to start your own business, I'd recommend maybe trying to figure out how to make do by going part time in yeah. your current job, if they allow that. And then you would devote the other, you know, 40 hours that week to full-time marketing and building your and educating yourself on home inspections to start yeah. this business. So, so I mean, a strat, Oh, sorry. So a strategy, I think going forward, like, and this is just an option, right? Cause everybody's situation is different, but right. if, if he were to uh, employ some type of strategy, like let's say they do let you go part-time. Cool. Great. It, let's say they don't maybe seek 
a different source of employment temporarily until you can get this thing going. That would be a little bit more flexible. Now you're probably going to take a decrease in pay either way, right? So maybe the idea and the strategy is to start now setting yourself up for that, socking mm -hmm. away money and paying off debt. I know uh, uh, I did that. I had a unique situation where I was working two jobs, so I took the money I was making from inspections, paid off debt like crazy, so they yeah. didn't have any whenever I made the transition. It ended up not mattering so much, but the thing is, is like, yeah, get get yourself strategically in a position where you have some saved up, or maybe you have some already. Maybe you have a 401k you can borrow from. Maybe you can get a business loan, something to kind of get you kickstarted because, yeah, it's not going to be six months, probably not. Um, it's more, we're talking about more like, a couple, a couple years, I think, in order to be really making, getting the amount, getting yourself out there and make, getting the inspection, the enough inspections to make a, a suitable living, yeah, a good living. So, so that leads into the next question. He says, how long did it take to the, before you filled up your schedule? So I'll, I'll take this one first. And so you can kind of get an idea. I was, I was coached. So I kind of had an idea of what to do, what to say and where to go. Right. And I, but I was driving from Houston to Dallas. So I wasn't, I'm at Dallas to Houston. I wasn't marketing in my backyard. So it did take me a little bit longer to start off, but my first year, and I was doing this beyond full-time hours, right? I had the privilege of doing that. And it took me, I, my first year and I marketed full-time nonstop and I only did 155 jobs my first year, you know, and some inspectors, yeah, they blow that out of the water or whatever, but you have to think like, I was coached. I knew where to go. I knew what to say. And I still only sold 155 jobs that year. So if you're working full time and you're not marketing full time and you're not coached, then it's, it's going to take forever. You also already had a solid product. Oh yeah. So, that so, too. Oh, so man, once you, about that. once you did an inspection for somebody, it was likely that, that you were to get, to, to continue to win their business right. because you already knew your product was solid. Right. So that's, you know, you don't know that. <laughs> if yeah. you, if you we're over that. here just talking about marketing and I didn't even bring up the product in place. It, it's, it's I important. always see like, like I say, sometimes I, I, I forget that I am privileged in that way. Like you, you have to have a product before you even start marketing. So even though you get your license and I remember telling you that, you know, I was like, get your product straight first. You know, you have to have something to sell before you can go out there and market it. Yeah. You know, so get that product straight. So, and then, so the leading on that question to you, you know, you might be, I know you're, you're, you had a little bit more flexible schedule in your job, but how long did it take you to get a full schedule? You would say. I mean, it was probably a year and a half before I started thinking, okay, this, I, I think I might be able to do this. Yeah, like you paid a, off a, your debt. I remember talking to you about that. About a year and a half yeah. in, I was going, all right, how many inspections do I need? And am I getting that many to be able to pay myself what I need to make to kind of make everything work? And it was starting to feel like that was starting to work at around yeah. a year and a half, somewhere in that. And it was still a few months before I actually pulled the trigger. Um, it got to the point where um, my old job had a busy season in the summer. And home inspections, <laughs> real estate industry is busy during the summer. And so I knew that not only was I doing them a disservice by not being you know, all in with them during their busiest time, mm -hmm. but I had the chance, I, I had the, uh, uh, I, I could have lost out on thousands of dollars because I had to work for them during the summer because I could see my business start to take that turn. Um, it could be different everywhere, but yeah, I mean, I, it's still, I mean, I'm sticking to like it's somewhere between one and two years. Yeah. It take, yeah, I think it would take, I'd say solid two years of really strong marketing, having a good product to really build those relationships. And that actually is what I talked about in the previous podcast. They were, they were talking about, you know, they're this other company and I don't think their product's really that great, you know, but they're really great at marketing, you know, and they were talking about it and they're like, why, why isn't our phone ringing? I'm like, because they've had that time. They have that, those relationships in front of you by years, you know, you just started. So uh, I thought that was a really good concept there. You know, you can have a really good, great product and you can have all your schooling in place, but it just takes time to build those relationships. So business starts coming in. So don't, uh, I say this several times, I'll say it again, just don't think that you, you have your phone number, you have your business cards, you got your website, 
your phone's going to start ringing. That's not, that's not how it works. <laughs> I feel like I said this on the last podcast, but I'm saying it again because it's so funny. But like whenever I first started my business Facebook page, um, I was like really nervous. Like I had it all like arranged and everything. And like you just like had to like publish it. Right. Yeah. And I was like really nervous because like I, at this point had never done an actual paid home inspection. And I was like, all right. You know, and I hit publish and I was just thinking, Oh, what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Now my <laughs> phone, I, I, I guess I just thought as soon as it was out there and as soon as I started pushing it, people were just going to call me like friends or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know? Man, phone didn't ring for months. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I, and I get to the point where I like forgot, like, why was I even concerned about any of that? Yeah. I just, I thought the second I hit that button, like it was just going to be like, ring, Hey, I need a home inspection. Not at all. <laughs> it's not, not. Yeah. The phone book days are over. <laughs> totally. <laughs> that's that's actually kind of a cool story about how our name was even made i, I know yeah, yeah. you never yeah. told me that but I, i'm familiar with the process there are so many double a things yeah double know. a's yeah my father and my my father and mom they created a, they had like a really great name picked out and whenever they picked out that name they went into the office and they're like, sorry, that name's already taken. And then they're like, oh man, what do we do? So they started to open up the phone book and they looked and they're like, oh, all these double A's, let's just call it A Action Home Inspection Group. And that's literally how it started. And that's, you know, I kind of like that mentality a little bit. And that's kind of always stuck with me. It's like, just because it's not perfect, you know, it's going to work. I, I have like an early 90s name, you know, A Action Home Inspection Group, and we have a successful business. Don't think too much about the name unless you name yourself Five Star Home Inspections and you have a 4.5 star rating on, online. But, you know, it's just like pick a somewhat clever name, you know, but don't overthink it. Don't right. worry about, you know, what's out there. Just post it and, you know, figure it out as it goes. If you get negative attention, take it down, you know? Well, well <laughs> but, so like, I mean, yeah, at the very least, you know, a, there is a lot of companies, like you said, like early nineties companies, especially uh, um, that had like double A's or something in their name. Um, uh, and so at the very least, it's like name recognition right off the bat. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but I mean, like the reason why people did that was because when you, I mean, it's phone books, mm -hmm. phone books are in alphabetical order. Yeah. Who's going to get the first call? No one wants to thumb through the phone book to find something. They just yeah. open up the first, and it's like you're more likely to get more calls because you were in the A section. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. So Dustin did say that he has a lot more questions, such as like software, schools, and uh, that. And I welcome anybody else that has questions. Go ahead and shoot me the email. I might not respond right away, but we do take these emails and we put them into the podcast. And I really hope this discussion helped you guys, you know, with becoming home inspectors or like understanding the amount of effort that comes into being a home inspection, a home inspector. It's like some of that stuff happened to me, you know, eight or nine years ago now. And I, it's almost like a distant dream for me yeah. because I work so hard and, but really the end goal, I'd say like you and I, I feel like we have actually really good work-life balance now. Okay. You know, I, I do work during the day, most days, but even I, the way I have the, I have the process down so well, by the time I get home, my work is done for the day and I get to, you know, cook dinner, watch TV. I don't have to worry about really anything until the next day. Um, but like Matt said too, as well, depending on how you manage your phone, you are always answering that phone. You're in the real estate game. And if you want business, you got to be by the phone. So if you're not a phone person, and I'm actually built a pros and cons list and, um, uh, Michael Conrad and I, on the next episode, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of starting your own home inspection business. So like where cool. I wrote down and I started writing down the pros and cons list there's a lot of cons to be a home inspector. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing with myself? <laughs> with me, all these cons. It's like, how did I end up in this situation? <laughs> thanks, Dad. Yeah, thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot of pros too, and we're going to break them up into two episodes, I think, and uh, post that too as well. So cool. I, think I, I just want to say, like, Dustin and anybody else too, I mean, I'm pretty easy to find, uh, you know, Matt Brading. Uh, give me a call. 
uh, give me a call, find me online, shoot me a message. If you have a question about something or whatever, um, and you feel like uh, I might be able to answer it, reach out to me. I love helping uh, all these people. Chris, you helped me a whole lot whenever I first got started. I like paying that forward. Uh, so if any, if there's anything that I, that someone feels like I can offer them, just give me a shout. It's happened before from the last podcast. I got a couple of guys that have called and asked a couple of questions. I love answering that stuff. Yeah, nice. And uh, the the best way to find us is actually have a Facebook group. It's Home Inspection Whisper Group, and you can join there and ask this. We like to keep it business related. We like to keep the technical questions out. So if you have anything like business related, we ask questions in there, and then we also post all the podcasts and YouTube content. <laughs> in there too as well. But uh, yeah, so what's the best way they can find you, uh, Matt, uh, for the future if they did? You know, what's your Instagram handle, your Facebook handle, uh, stuff like that? So uh, just, you know, on Facebook, it's just Texas Edge Home Inspections, uh, I think. Um, and then uh, <laughs> it might be have a PLLC, but if you, if you search Texas Edge Home Inspections, you're going to find me. Uh, also, uh, Instagram, it's at texas.edge.inspect. And so those are the, those are the easiest ways. Obviously. Yeah. And honestly, I, I, I really like the fact, you know, about how you've just taken every step, you know, you've out, you've always called me and you're like, Hey man, what do I do next? And I'm like, well, just do this. You're like, oh. you're always a little bit hesitant. And then you're like, fine. And then you just yeah. jump and you did it. And I remember you having that conversation back in the day where you're talking about, you're like, well, I have this many jobs coming in and now, you know, I'm doing this, you know, should I quit my job? I'm like, yeah, just do it. And you're just, <laughs> you're just like, just do it. And then you're like, well, because you know, I grew up as an entrepreneur. So I live in this constant state of chaos and it's fine with me. I'm okay with that. But like, I, for, I forget where most people, you know, you had a real job for 20 years, you know, that must have been really nerve wracking to move from a, a 20 year job and then being like, well, now I'm going to be responsible for myself. You know, so it was, it was nerve wracking to think about it. But when it got to the point where I did quit, it was like a relief because my whole fear was that I didn't know if I was going to bring in enough business. Now, well before I started bringing in what I felt like was enough business to feel comfortable, you pushed me to do it. Yeah. You just kept telling me, just do it, man. Just pull the triggers, do it. I didn't do it. I, almost everything you've told me to do, I've done. Every once in yeah. a while, we don't agree on something. Me and Chris don't always see 100% eye to eye on every little thing. But for the most part, we're like-minded in this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I did employ a lot of the things that you told me. But like, man, right there in in – when it was like getting close and you were just like, just do it, man. You're fine. I did not believe. And uh, <laughs> I pushed myself into the point where I was, I could not do both any longer. Right. I, I, I worked to the point where I was doing like 20 inspections a, a month and working a full-time job. That's Oof. like, and I say full-time again, flexibility, right? I mean, like yeah. I was probably working 75% of a full-time job. I was always on call with them too. So I'd like, even when I was doing inspections, I could still get called from my other job. So yeah, it was a lot to juggle around. Right. But I mean, I pushed it to the point where I was busting at the seams. I couldn't do any more. I couldn't do both at one time. And when I, when that happened, I felt confident going, okay, this is the time. Yeah. And I mean, now it's been over a year and I look back and I'm like, yeah, it was the time. It feels good. But, I, but honestly, you, what you, I think you just described right there is just pure hustle. So like if you, yeah. if you want to get into this, it's not like, Hey, I'm going to, I know we hit this a few times. I'm just, it's just going to work out. No, it requires a lot of work, you know, yes. for your phone to start ringing and things to happen and you work for free a lot. So it, it your phone doesn't just ring, you know, and I, I have to say before I even started making real money, even making an inspection firm, I was like, I made a lot of mistakes at the beginning. I'd say it's like three to four years in before I started making money, you know, like where I was like, Oh man, I'm actually doing okay for myself now, you know? And then, so that being said, I think that's a great podcast. It's right there at an hour. And thanks Matt for coming on again. I, I oh, really think you're the best person to answer those questions because of how you got into the field. And you can kind of see, you know, as a solo man operating, having a full-time job and moving into a home inspection field and just describing the amount of work that came in. You know, I think that's perfect. I think that's great. And if well, man, thanks for having me. It was, it was great to answer those questions. I did feel like uh, I had something to offer on there. So, so yeah. thank you. 
Yeah. So uh, that being said, if y'all are interested in like the home inspection whisper content, make sure that you just join our, uh, look at our page. It's homeiw.com. And then you can also uh, join our home inspection whisper group on Facebook. That's where we talk uh, most of the time. And I think that's, we're going to wrap it up there. Keep an eye out for Michael Conrad's episode. I believe we're recording that on Wednesday and it'll be released next, next Sunday. This one will be on Sunday. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks guys. Bye. All right. Bye.